Next, it's Ken Salisbury and Alex Temelkoff. Salisbury takes the lead, landing a jab on the body and the head of Temelkoff, who, with arms around Salisbury's neck, Temelkoff started to punch the back of his head, which is unsportsmanlike at its worst. Chaos erupted when Salisbury's trainer, Bernie Hall, grabbed Temelkov's head, prompting Temelkov's brother to fly across the ring before he delivers an unsuccessful flying kick to Hall's head. From there, all hell breaks loose. Even Ballard was forced to resort to his boxing days as he's delivering uppercuts and right crosses. We start with Juan Manuel Lopez and Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. Juan Manuel Lopez scored a spectacular and somewhat improbable 11th round KO over bitter rival Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Seconds after the finish, Lopez and Vasquez's corner man began jawing. The two men are walking toward each other, and Lopez uncorked a left hook that appeared to land. Lopez and the cornerman exchanged a short series of punches before they were separated. Andrew Galata and Riddick Bowe. For nearly seven rounds of boxing that took place at Madison Square Garden in New York, Galata landed a lot of shots. The problem, though, was too many of them were below the belt. With Bowe having collapsed to the canvas in pain, the fight was waved off. Several of Bo's team, including his manager, immediately moved between the ropes. Very quickly, things got out of hand. So quickly that within seconds, the ring was full of bodies. An already tense atmosphere reached a boiling point, and chaos broke out in the blink of an eye. Next up, it's Sean Porter and Adrian Granados. Granados showboated and fought his heart out. He ate some big shots from Porter, but he never consistently created the offense in the way needed to win the rounds. In the fifth round, his mother shouted to cheer on her son. Granados immediately responded to the mom's advice from the crowd and was made to pay for it when Sean Porter clubs him with a big right hand. Here. 
Next, it's Roger Mayweather and Vinny Pazienza. Roger Mayweather was taunted by Pazienza throughout the fight, and Pazienza was the aggressor most of the way, but Mayweather was never hurt. Mayweather asserted clear control of the fight in the later rounds and floors Pazienza late in the 11th. A few moments later, The two fighters kept going at it after the bell numerous times. Then when the final bell rang, Pazienza's manager, Lou Duva, rushed across the ring menacingly towards Mayweather. Mayweather threw a punch and Duva went to the ground as referee Mills Lane tried to keep the two apart. Zab Judah and Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather had the fight in control for a majority of the 12 rounds, and round 10 was no different. Mayweather was seen taunting Judah. However, things quickly took an ugly turn, and Judah hit him with a low blow, followed by a right to the back of the head. This enraged Mayweather's uncle and trainer Roger Mayweather, who jumped in the ring to confront Judah. Yoel Judah, Zab Judah's father, quickly followed suit, and he even threw a punch at the older Mayweather, and this in turn paved the way for both fighters' camps to jump in for an all-out melee. Next, it's Brian London and Dick Richardson. Before the bell sounded to start round eight, London leapt out of his corner and charges Richardson. Both boxers are shouting and swearing at each other, and the ref bravely walks in between. He looks at London's swollen eye and raises Richardson's hand. Instantly, the outraged London lurches toward the Welshman, pushing his trainer Johnny Lewis out of the way. As Richardson tries to defend himself, the Blackpool boxer's father in seconds jumps into the ring. The ball-headed battler Jack London starts pounding Lewis as his son was held back in one corner. Damn! Next, it's Adonis Stevenson and Chad Dawson. Stevenson, who has a reputation for huge punch power, lands an absolute stunning left hand and sprawls Dawson on the canvas. He was able to beat the count, but his legs were shot, forcing the referee to stop the contest. What a night of fights! The crowd is exploding. Fans are shouting to congratulate Stevenson on his resounding victory. As soon as Dawson hit the floor, I... Next, it's Andrew Galata and John Ruiz. Given the reputation of both men, the bout started exactly as expected when Galata punched Ruiz in the back of the head and Ruiz put Galata in a headlock in the first round, but it quickly got exciting.
Ruiz's out-of-control trainer Norman Stone crossed the ring and popped one of his counterparts in the chest. Ryan Garcia and Jose Lopez. Lopez running a little bit. He may be ready to go. Garcia left it. Another right hand. Ryan Garcia just rips through Puerto Rico's Jose Lopez in two rounds with fantastic hand speed. Garcia and Lopez were both throwing shots in the first, with Garcia getting the better, but Lopez showed a clear game plan of trying to put pressure on the young fighter. The fight continued along the same in the second until the final minute of the round, when Garcia just unleashed a massive flurry of offense at Lopez, dropping him with a right uppercut. First, it's Amir Khan and Polly Malignaghi. Amir Khan wins his U.S. debut after a convincing win over Polly Malignaghi at Madison Square Garden in New York. The WBA light welterweight champion uses speed and strength to dominate from start to finish. But otherwise, has never really Amir uses that left hand jab all the way through the fight, breaking his opponent down with every pop. He landed punch after punch while Polly could only get a few into Khan. At the end of the 10th round, it looked like Malignaghi would be pulled out of the fight. Khan only had to wait another 85 seconds into the 11th round before the referee steps in and ends it. They're asking you to do something in the last two rounds. Go on, I'll give to give you one more round. And it wasn't even from that. Manny Pacquiao and Miguel Cotto. There's the speed advantage for Pacquiao to take his stuff. Pacquiao hits. Let's take a look at it. Pacquiao fought for his place in boxing history with a technical knockout in this clash against Miguel Cotto. And the Pac-Man, his respectable pace, it just brightened up the performance. Pacquiao. Now Pacquiao starting to. Pacquiao threw punches and flurries and from all angles until Cotto began to slow down. And with the face swollen, Kato bleeding from his nose and cuts, he couldn't stop Pacquiao from bouncing inside and throwing both hands at will. Then Manny pursues him nonstop right up to the end. Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Conor McGregor. Floyd Mayweather is a pure counter puncher these days. He uses hand speed to pick off his foe's shots and makes them pay with lightning quick returns. Mayweather finished the Irish UFC star in an explosive fight at T-Mobile Arena. After dishing out a severe beating over the last three rounds, Floyd finally finished the show with a series of punches that wobbled McGregor and prompted referee Robert Byrd to halt the contest at 105 in round 10.
Gary Russell and Kiko Martinez. Averages 36 jabs, bop, bopping that jab off top of his head. Russell's advantage in hand speed obvious immediately as he lands punches at will on Martinez in the first two rounds. By the second round, Martinez had suffered a cut over his left eye. Had just uh, under 143 for Russell, or is it uh, tread? Martinez catches Russell with an overhand right at about 110 into the fifth. However, toward the end of the fifth, Martinez is bleeding badly from a cut that opened three rounds earlier. With blood smeared across his face, the referee asks a ringside physician to take a look at the cut and decides to stop the one-sided fight after taking a brief look at Martinez's face. Adrian Broner versus Vincent Martin Rodriguez. The problem, Adrian Broner takes out heavy underdog Martin Rodriguez in the third round with a nasty left hook and notorious hand speed. In the third, Broner drops his foe with a left hook. He hurts him with a right uppercut and then tries to finish wildly. Then he dials in that left hook. The Argentine was just too damaged to get up. The time of the finish, one minute, 43 seconds. Down in the heat of the action. They've got him some body shots. You get those body shots. Next, it's Willermo Rigandu versus Nonito Donaire. Hard right hand by Rigandu. Somewhat blunted. Rigandu may not have the most marketable style, but he proved in this fight with his fellow entrant Donaire that speed definitely kills. Oh, good shot by Rigandu landing again with the left hand. There's another straight left hand on the chin of Donaire. The 32 year old Cuban former amateur standout beats the Filipino Flash to the punch all night long, and we mean literally. Sing it Lionel Richie all night long. It was a clinic on how to use great hand speed, superb defense, and movement to frustrate Donaire and blunt his offensive attack. Sergio Martinez and Darren Barker. Barker was stunned with a right before the champion moves in with another right and landed behind his opponent's ear. The Brit goes to the canvas, although he tried to get back up, and he's counted out. Con esos jabs que no llegan, y esa es la situación. Cuando se queda ahí más cerca, pues corre el riesgo. Al final no hace, le va la marcha. O sea, otra izquierda es al revés porque ha entrado muy bien. Sergio Maravilla está de verdad. It's Jamie Munguia and Saram Ali. He's too young to qualify for the Olympics. On the road for Ali. But see, he got hurt with a left hook. Stocking Ali in the corner. And Ali holds on. The larger Munguia floored Ali with a left hook about a minute into the opening round and a right hand scoring another knockdown a minute later. A dazed Ali stumbled through the final seconds and made it to the bell. Gia doesn't want to box. He's my punching power, it is real. And Ali just felt Gia, no respect for the champion here. It was painfully clear his speed and skill would not be enough to overcome Munguia's power and a corner stoppage would have been completely justified at that point. But the fourth and final knockdown drew an immediate stoppage from the referee. Jesse Rodriguez and Corlos Cuadras. That subtle little shift right there, the pivot. San Rodriguez is going to see a whole lot.
but because of an illness, a quick acceptance to face Carlos Cuadros at the beginning of the week was what the doctor ordered for Jesse Rodriguez, even though he'd have to jump up two weight classes. Bam's doing some nice work there, but I think his corner walk in. Uppercut and a, and a, shot, a left. The weight discrepancy made no difference to Bam as he knocked down Cuadras and used his speed and footwork to beat him by unanimous decision, and he wins the vacant WBC Super Flyweight title at the Footprint Center in Phoenix. So Jesse Rodriguez jumps up two weight classes and wins a world title. Next, it's Seferino Rodriguez and Sam Eggington. Once the rangy Eggington found his range, he couldn't miss with straight right hands as Rodriguez's nose was bloodied. Eggington landed a terrific left hook in the seventh while pressed against the ropes, and Rodriguez wilted. The stoppage finally comes in the 10th as a right uppercut followed by a left hook had the champion out with the ropes holding him up. With the referee slow to react, a more sickening punch landed and Rodriguez slumped motionless on the ropes. Next is Jose Cito Lopez and Victor Ortiz. Lopez was a late substitution after Andre Berto tested positive for drugs, but he's proven his ability after a short time participating in the match. In a very exciting back and forth fight, Josecito Lopez stuns Victor Ortiz at the end of the ninth in Los Angeles. Ortiz, who was well ahead on all three scorecards at the time of the stoppage, was forced to retire in the corner with an apparently broken jaw. Steve Cruz versus McGuigan. Barry McGuigan was one of the most famous boxers on the planet at the time, and although he fought to the final bell, the heat took a toll on McGuigan. Cruz from Texas put the Irishman down twice in the final round, which was awarded 1986's Round of the Year, and he claimed the featherweight title. Kelly Pavlik and Jermaine Taylor won.
Kelly Pavlik knocked out Jermaine Taylor in the seventh round to win the world middleweight title in Atlantic City. Far behind on points after absorbing a brutal beating in the second round, Pavlik concerned Taylor and stuns him with a hard right to the jaw, then sends him down with a flurry of lefts and rights. Pavlik remained undefeated while Taylor lost for the first time. Ray Mercer versus Tommy Morrison. Take Morrison out of it. Get that the referee set for six. And he doesn't want to go to the later round. Morrison punched himself out early. Seven, the oldest member. He has more to lose in this head. Mercer would end the fight only 28 seconds into the fifth round. With Morrison backed into the corner, Mercer was able to land a 15-punch combination. Clearly hurt from the exchange, Morrison slumps against the ropes but the referee allowed Mercer to land several more punishing blows to a now defenseless Morrison before finally ending the fight. Problem he had in the Damiani fight, the lower lip on it. Third round, Morrison teeing off on Mercer. Power. Mercer has the title, but these two fighters. Fights in the round, Tommy Morrison and Lance. Lennox Lewis versus Franz Botha. Mating from the outside, but he'll have to watch the fast of Lennox Lewis. Falling them pretty low, but looking. Lewis defeats Botha in a second round TKO to retain his heavyweight title. With about 40 seconds left in the round, Lewis was able to land a powerful four punch combination that knocked Botha halfway out of the ring. Botha crawls back in and is able to get back to his feet, but is clearly hurt from the exchange, which prompted referee Larry O'Connell to stop the fight, giving Lewis his second consecutive second round knockout victory. Next, it's Bermain Stavern and Chris Ariola. 
Ariola comes in first. From the inside they go. And Ariola tried to get the best of it, turning over that left. Ariola finding a little bit of uppercut. Leaving himself open to an uppercut. And he just caught a right uppercut and then a left hook. BC heavyweight title as they open up and he catches him. That's the fight that the bird is fighting right now, but it takes too long to get there. Get there first. Exchange here in the opening minute of round two as Ariola found success. Much more measured approach here. There's a lead right hand by Ariola as he backs the bird up, catches him on the left, sends in the uppercut. As he snaps off that jab and tries to send a right. Bermain Stavern languished on the ropes for long stretches and didn't throw many punches against Chris Ariola, but he made them count, especially a huge right hand in the sixth round. It might be quick. Good comeback round. Here we got him by Ariola. And now that other thing they're going to land by it. Ariola sweep work by Stavern. That body work the first time. Look at Ariola to the corner as Ariola. Looks to apply pressure in the three, and Chris Ariola is taking control. Head left hook. Stavern has the quickness to turn that. That big right hand, which knocked Ariola down, ultimately won him a vacant heavyweight world title in front of a crowd of 3,992 in the first boxing event ever held at the Galen Center on the campus of the University of Southern California. He has to bring it up before he throws it. Now here's Ariola where he has accomplished his best work so far. Hey, you okay? Headshot after headshot. Ariola doesn't look good at all. Headshot after headshot. That's and that it. is. Jenity Golovkin and Daniel Giel. So, so what serves Golovkin? There's something to be said for both. In punching range, the other guy here, Giel, has to come time to slip away to the right. Golovkin tracks him. Golovkin retained his middleweight world title for the 11th time as he blows away former middleweight title holder Giel in the third round for an explosive ending round of the year so far a cameraman allowed his strap just to kind of hang out on the ring apron yep catching Troy type of fighter but he's patient Currents. and then the clock was allowed to run to four minutes rather than the normal three down goes again grab Golovkin and then spin him Golovkin dropped Gal in the second round and then dusted him in the third with a right hand Gal made it to his feet, but he was all over the place on unsteady legs, and referee Michael Ortega stops the fight at 2 minutes, 43 seconds. But he made a motion with his hand, as the, and, and Golovkin with him on the ropes. Right hand by Golovkin, drives Gial into the rope. And Golovkin is going to work. Body shot, hard right hand up. Corner to Gale. Julio Cesar Chavez and Meldrick Taylor II. Well, he's doing nothing right now. Left hand yesterday. He doesn't want to fight inside. Meldrick Taylor on the sure. Well, There's not many people realize he had his body hurt. Close to Randall. Julio Cesar Chavez, but transformed my body inside out. Will flurry to the Taylor attack. But the surprising part was that Chavez never came on strong. Meldrick Taylor was knocked out by Chavez in the eighth in the last big match of his career. Chavez throws a left hook that lands flush on Taylor's face and sends him sprawling across the ring onto the canvas. Taylor was up at four, 
took the eight count and nodded to the referee he was okay. But when he came back out, Chavez was still landing hard punches and Taylor wasn't able to land anything else. The referee stepped in to quickly stop the fight. Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin the Hitman Hagler. Fight that we all did. Is that Leonard is the and Hagler a good left hand of the head. Leonard would eventually earn a split decision victory in a thrilling battle with Marvin Hitman Hagler. Hagler would spend most of the fight as the aggressor while Leonard would pepper Hagler with combinations before retreating away. Now Hagler being the aggressor has Leonard on the ropes. Leonard trying to fight his way off the ropes. Hagler hammers him back on bat here. Ray is During the last 30 seconds of each round, Leonard would attack Hagler with a flurry of punches in an effort to steal the round on the scorecard. Overall, Leonard landed 306 of 629 punches compared to Hagler's 291 of 792. Hagler is astonishing, really. Leonard just took a deep breath and dropped his arms. Now, whether that was a... But again, Leonard on the ropes tries to... Vermaine Stavern versus Chris Ariola, May 2014. Stavern... <laughs> One year. Oh! One month. stops Chris Ariola in an explosive fight in Los Angeles, California. Ariola comes in first. Stavern was the harder puncher in the opening rounds, and he wobbles Ariola with wild right hand jabs. Turning over that left hand, looking for that right uppercut as well. They went back and forth, landing shots and many fierce exchanges, but Ariola had Stavern in trouble multiple times, but he just couldn't drop him. In the sixth round, Stavern finally finds home with a clean right hand, and he nails Ariola, who badly wobbles and then falls to the mat with delayed reaction. Stavern, one year, oh, one month. of the Haitian slugger to win a heavyweight championship. Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora, November 2014. From the opening moments, Fury also used the southpaw stance for most of the fight. We were training, definitely gonna stay focused throughout the whole fight. He used those wild jabs to trouble Chisora and stayed on the outside with the longer reach and dominated the battle. There's a little bit of a wobble from Chisora. He was off balance. Chisora failed to land any telling punches due to Fury's crazy particular fighting style. The Gypsy King is victorious after dominating the fight, and Chisora's corner pulls him out at the end of the 10th round. Versus Barrera. Barrera doing clowning with a clown. With some royal blood. Round seven. It appears. Marco Antonio Barrera scores a comprehensive 12 round unanimous decision over Prince Nassim Hamed, handing the bombastic Englishman his first defeat in 36 pro bouts. Barrera's fighting the way he is. Every round, Barrera Barrera is not looking in. Big left hand by Barrera. <laughs> Big left hook by Barrera. On 
the left hand, but he hasn't thrown anything with it. Herrera surprised everyone by imposing his boxing skills on the Sheffield-born power puncher. The Mexican skill set and accuracy was dazzling at times. Not taking that advice. He's going for it. I think Herrera has already shown with his chin. before the fight. And if he loses, it's because... Mike Tyson and James Buster Douglas. Not intimidated. He wants to keep it going. Buster landing these... Oh, Jason, I forgot! My Buster Douglas! But early. That right hand to throw. Closing seconds of this, the first one. Wow! With the right hand is busted. Mike comes through. Uh, probably would be Mike at any time. James Buster Douglas was the first boxer to defeat Mike Tyson. Buster Douglas shows up with quick jabs and made the most of his 12 inch reach advantage over Tyson. Octavio Miran. Oh, that is a telling blow by Mike. Dead is Buster coming back. And that big left hook, and there he goes, head hunting. Oh, he can't get careless. Look at that. I haven't seen Mike in this kind of trouble before. Iron Mike was sent crashing to the mat for the first time ever after an uppercut, followed by a four punch hook combination in the 10th round. Tyson was counted out by referee Octavio Moran, giving him the first loss of his career. to drag this uh, into some later rounds. There was a rigid fight. Mike Tyson's first loss is considered to be one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. Hits up the seven, and he, he's not going to make it. Buster trying to finish this thing, and you get an idea. Mike is trying to finish that all night. Oh, that's a nice uppercut. That's a nine, and I expected Mike. Look at this. Look at Buster. We got him again. Buster fights back strongly, landing some big shots. Four. Look at Mike actually grasping the hang. Look at these. And these right there, but Buster landed to a three. And look at this. James Buster Douglas, he's back, versus Tony Tucker. Just shorten the ring up. It's at ringside, and it is not. Tony Tucker finishes James Buster Douglas with a flurry of punches and wins the International Boxing Federation heavyweight title. Now we talked about what a good amateur Tucker is, and Tucker... Douglas seemed comfortably ahead when Tucker suddenly hit him with a right hand, 105 into the 10th round. The punch knocked Douglas into the ropes, and Tucker was on him quickly, hammering with a series of punches that moved him across the ring. right hand would make... Up there. Oh, fight him. Douglas unable to defend himself against the onslaught, and referee Mills Lane moves in and stops the fight at 136 as Tucker continued flailing punches to Douglas's head. That was debate sub 12 field. Pardon one minute. Tucker, because at one. George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. It's October 30th, 1974, and 32-year-old Muhammad Ali becomes the heavyweight champion of the world for the second time when he knocks out 25-year-old champ George Foreman in the eighth round of the Rumble in the Jungle in a match made in Kinshasa, Zaire.
It's Vladimir Klitschko and Corey Sanders. Corey Sanders from South Africa knocks out Klitschko 27 seconds into the round to take on the WBO heavyweight title in a major upset at Hanover, Germany. Sanders caught the 6'7", 240-pound Klitschko with a short, hard left with 33 seconds left in the first round and then put him down on the canvas three more times. The outcome drew boos from the crowd of 11,500 angered over the brevity of the fight and the unexpected result. Being asked a perfect left hand. And he was able to come back and knock the left hand that Sanders is hitting him with. And he's attacking to try to get out of trouble instead of holding. And this is not going to go well. Another knockdown. Lennox Lewis versus Haseem Rahman. See, Desmond has a terrific record in terms of the knockouts. There was come forward. Oh, uppercut once again. The fifth saw the fight come to an emphatic end, backed up into the ropes. As he looked to preserve energy in the final minute, Lewis drops his guard. Rahman sends his chance to strike, and he sends in a right hand, landing flush on his rival's chin. Away in considerable style, and maybe as a combination. Short right hand in. To be fair to him, he came back, and that right hand of his has come in. The Rock, a 20 to 1 underdog, claims the WBC, IBF, and IBO heavyweight titles in sensational fashion, flooring and defending the champion in the fifth round in Guateng, South Africa. It's Manny Pacquiao versus Lalo Ledwaba. And remember, whenever you have this situation, box them. Make them decide. That's exactly what Emmanuel Stewart was saying to me in the punching bag. Pacquiao was still unknown in U.S. boxing circles and enters the ring as a big underdog in his U.S. debut. By the end of the night, his name would be on the lips of hardened ringsiders. Leb Waba was decked by a left hand in round two and overwhelmed throughout the match. Bakio was at his devastating best. One of the most incredible runs in modern boxing history was underway. That's a rude awakening for a good master boxer like Leb Waba. Tasted his own blood in round one. Got up out of his corner between rounds. Throw the left hook, land the left hook. Bob is trying to use his ground and just throw the right hand. The guy's right there in front of him. Fighter, he had no idea. Hey! I feel. In the eyes of Led Waba. Mikey Bay versus John Molina. Oh, and Bay, how is he still standing? Unbelievable. A fighter can take 30 hard punches to the cheek and the side of the head and the neck without getting wobbled. And he can have his orbital broken and swell out a gruesome hematoma and still keep his wits about him. <laughs> 